Hello, welcome back to part two of our What is PDA video. Uh, we thought we'd take this opportunity as parents of a child with PDA to discuss what it is to us um, and kind of give our experiences. So, what is PDA? PDA is short for Pathological Demand Avoidance and is part of the autism spectrum. Uh, and one of the things you might find if you looking into PDA for your child is that it can show as a very different profile to what people kind of think of as kind of classical classical autism um, which can then lead to issues getting diagnosed. So PDA is characterised by intense and urgent need to avoid demands um, from small everyday ones up to massive life-changing ones. As well as the need to avoid demands, which is characteristic of PDA, there are other elements of the profile that you may see that stand out differently from other autistic profiles. These can include using social strategies, just like everybody else uses every day, but using them repeatedly and in situations where you wouldn't normally expect. So things like distraction, bargaining, um, we had an incident with our son where he was desperately trying to gain control over something and you could almost see him go through each stage in his mind. He would try to bargain over doing something, then he'd try and distract you, then he'd try and argue about it until eventually he, we had to give in um, and realise that the, need we were put, the demand we were putting on him <clears throat> wasn't actually that important in the, in the grand scheme of things. There's also um, appearing sociable but lacking understanding. Again, our son used to uh, used to be able to know 150 sign language signs um, and you'd be able to have a full conversation with him by the age of two. But when you probed a little bit deeper, he wouldn't be able to understand what the sentences that he was saying meant. This also led to us having um, issues with people Kind of believing that he had an issue because they'd say well he, he's perfectly fine he, he's able to have a, a conversation he seems to know what's going on and give eye contact as well he used to be able to really engage and give eye contact whilst making the the conversation with people which made people think well he's not autistic at all but so often what he's doing is he's, he's repeating phrases or sayings that he's heard other people say in that situation so if he does something that hurts somebody he'll say I am so sorry, not because he necessarily is sorry, but because he knows that that's how you should react when someone gets hurt about something you've done. Following on from these, uh, there is intense mood swings and emotional meltdowns where just they lose complete control of themselves and, and what they're saying and doing. And it's really hard to not look at it as a child misbehaving. And that's the kind of mindset you have to try and get out of. And see it more of it as a panic attack um, and that how they're acting and behaving they are not in control of their body and their actions at the time in fact their, their brain almost isn't connected to their their thoughts and feelings um, and afterwards they feel incredibly low and then very very low self-esteem and very low opinion of themselves because they know the way they were behaving and that their thoughts and feelings were making them behave wasn't acceptable also, these meltdowns can last from anything from a short amount of time to a long time. Max would have um, really, really intense meltdowns that would last between two to three hours of constant screaming, particularly after he was at school. And these would last for such a long time and would be draining for everybody involved. But once we managed to reduce the demands that he was experiencing, these lessons, which is really good, and the, the length of time that the meltdowns last now is much smaller, which is great. So the next one is role play. Max used to really, well he still does, engage in role play pretty much 24-7. Um, he used to wear a Batman mask, particularly to nursery, um, because he would feel safe and um, nobody can hurt Batman, can they? So he would love to wear that. Um, and it's another way of of being able to communicate with your child as well is doing role play and playing with them um, and it really reduces the demands. And he would just get quite upset if you tried to talk to him as Max. Um, he would refuse to, to talk as himself, he would stay in character 
and we were quite lucky in that both our backgrounds is in acting um so we had we thankfully had some skills to be able to help with that um but i think even then it was incredibly challenging to be able to to think as a character and, and know how to use that to your you know to your advantage to be able to to c communicate and, and bond with the child i found it quite difficult when he was going through a phase of liking star wars i had no knowledge of star wars or anything so i had to quickly uh learn fast about all the characters how they would speak what they would say um and everything another thing we do as well is use cuddly toys and that is great to be able to engage with his emotions and find out what's happened in his day as well you can end up feeling quite lonely because you don't know many of the kids who've got pda or autism um so we tend to have his cuddly toys have pda um and to be able to relate to the experiences he's gone through during the day and that seems to because it's him not talking to us but talking to, to a third party uh, it seems to enable him to open up a big one is focusing intently on a subject now i mean this is something that a lot of autistic profiles have um so it can be a film a person a song i think we've been through pretty much all of those at some point yeah. um and it's not i'm not talking about you know how children have a favorite film they want to watch lots this is all and everything they can talk about and we've it can be varied i mean we've had shrek postman pat postman pat was a big <laughs> one um star car, wars star wars cars and when it's horrible histories at the moment which is quite useful because it's helping him learn history um you but, find as well that they want to absorb as much information about this particular subject as much as possible talk about it 24 7 yeah. and then suddenly overnight it will change and it will be oh i like this now um and then they want to absorb as much information about that as well so it changes but it, it can be you know it can things can stay as they are but they can also change as well which is it, it's surprising for us all when suddenly it's one minute it's this and then the next minute it's not especially so. if it's christmas yes up and you've already bought all your presents yeah um <laughs> And you can see sometimes as well that he is searching for his next thing. Yeah. So he's kind of moving off the thing he was interested in. He's not talking about it as much, not role playing it as much, but hasn't quite found the other thing. Um, and has been times where he's started to move away, hasn't found anything. So he's gone back, yeah. almost like a, like a comfort blanket, gone back to those things that he was interested in. Um, but then eventually he'll find a new thing and, and, and move on to that. Probably the biggest one, which is hard to get your head around is not responding to conventional ways of teaching parenting men i don't know about you guys but we read all the books and went on the courses and, and all that stuff before we had kids and thought yeah we're going to do this with our kids and i'm not going to do this and etc etc and you have to kind of throw all that out the window because it just doesn't work um you can try and you know set boundaries and, and and then rules and all these things but ultimately you have to try and kind of be led by what works for them because a kid with pda or an adult with pda um will see rules and regulations as someone else taking control of them and so it's finding a way to still get the the success that the rules would hopefully get you to without making them feel like they're out, they haven't got the control so giving them choices within so it's not a case of do this or don't do it it's a case of we're going to do this but you can choose how it happens so for example like when we go out somewhere i will always say do you want to put on your t-shirt first or your pants or your t-shirt first and then your trousers or do you want to put on the left shoe rather than the right shoe? You know, just give plenty of choice as much as you can. So I guess as well, we probably should look at what a demand is so that you can find out what kind of demands that you're putting on your child. Um, a lot of these I didn't know until I kind of looked into them deeper and was like, actually, yeah, that's a demand that he's experiencing. I didn't realize that and then try and remove it. And also sometimes they put demands on themselves and that yeah. can have just as 
much impact on their anxiety, even though they're the one doing it, it can still cause anxiety and, and pressure. A demand that they put on themselves can kind of be, I don't know, Max has got um, a tablet and say when the battery starts to die, he then needs to charge it, but that can be a demand that it needs charging, um, which could be quite difficult. And it can mean he, he will leave it almost at the last second or until it dies before he'll go and get the, the charger for it and then get upset and have a meltdown because the, tab the tablet has died. And it's quite difficult to get your head around the thought of well, why didn't you just go and get the charger? But actually he was almost unable to go and get the charger um, or go into the toilet. Yeah, going um, to the toilet can be a really big one as well. Because he doesn't want to have to stop what he's doing because that's him not having control of it. So he will hold it until again to the last second and then run to the toilet so a few examples are recipes, orders, relationships, timetables, star charts, yeah. um, laws, so social uh, rules and cues as well. So the things that we do that we don't even think about but make our social society work, that that's a demand. Menus as well, like going to a restaurant um, and saying like, I want this on the menu. Um, you know, looking at a menu can be quite daunting at times as well um so these can be kind of categorized into a few different types so we have direct commands from yourself or others um so things like do this brush teeth put your shoes on um which is a lot of how as parents we tend to think and as soon as you get pushback from a child uh, the way i was raised anyway um is because i said so and that's really not helpful because they don't understand that doesn't mean anything to them if they're feeling anxious because you're asking them to do something not giving them a reason to do it is just going to make them feel even more anxious there's also indirect demands uh, such as praise which is really hard to think about but if you're praising someone and they don't feel they're deserving that praise it almost feels like you're demanding they react in a certain way when max was a baby um when he first rolled over and uh first i don't know clapped or whatever <laughs> we would be like oh my god that's amazing and he would cry yeah um which was a shock to us because we'd be like oh you know why is he <laughs> why is he crying yeah. um uh so i think obviously he felt that that was that was a bad thing um at the time and he deals a lot better with praise now but we have to word it in a certain way yeah. to help him be able to deal with it there's also the kind of micro demands within a demand um so the demand might be we're going to go and do something but within that there will be get dressed put your shoes on sit in the car do this maybe sit next to someone that you don't particularly want to sit next to yeah um so they can smells all... things like that as well that that people, other people might be eating certain foods um they're all in those that i ought to uh demands so things like i should get up i should get dressed i should shower i should brush my teeth they're all demands as well which you put on yourself to to to, to live to do everyday life there's also the internal demands, so I, I'm hungry, I'm, I'm thirsty, I'm tired. My, my body's telling me I need to do something to do something because it needs something, food, water, sleep. But I'm not in control of that and my body's telling me that I need to go for a wee and I don't want to do that because that's making me anxious. And that could be the bit that pushes me over into a meltdown if I've got PDA. The things we want to do as well, like hobbies and interests that you might have which you then want to go and do and see if safe to see friends as well. And that then is a demand on yourself. So we've talked about what PDA is, profile on the, on the spectrum, uh, what demands are and what characteristics uh, a person with PDA may show. But I think it's important to know what the, the end result can be um, because that is the thing that you will probably find as a parent you notice and start to think okay there's something else going on here um certainly for us it was anyway uh, because as children grow up 
you expect their behavior and, and tolerance and ability to deal with situations to change and for us it didn't and he had the same issues that when we look back now we can see what was triggering them so he didn't sleep particularly well um because one sleep is a demand um but also the bed he had a lot of sensory issues as well which can you know obviously like baby grows we've had like linings in them we didn't even know you know we didn't even think at the time that you know the seams in the baby grows and the nappies maybe even could have yeah. triggered sensory issues um but the, a lot of people on the autism spectrum have sensory processing as well which we'll probably do another video on at some point yeah so ultimately if your child's going throughout their whole day and they wake up and need to get ready for school so you go and get dressed ready for school um, or if they're, they're younger we're going to go to play group or we're going to go to nursery or we're going to just go and do this that or the other um, they've already started their demands at the start of the day and then they build up throughout the day and build up and build up and build up and they build up. say that it's like a coke bottle effect so um throughout the day like you say they can it builds up and builds up so every time someone gives you a demand or a sensory thing triggers you like a loud noise or a smell you shake the coke bottle um and it just builds up and builds up and builds up and then eventually because it is so so fizzy um the lid comes off and you have that big big meltdown and that can be fight, flight, or freeze. Uh, so it could be fight, which is um, you know, it could be a, a meltdown or physical thrashing around, shouting, screaming. Um, I, I think once you've seen one of the, one of those, you 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 know what I mean. Um, it can be flight, which would be to run away, and so, hide, and hide. So you know, it can be there's the, the first you know, stories of children at school running off and hiding somewhere because they can't deal with this anymore. Max used to hide under the dining table um, at times when he felt so, so overwhelmed. Um, he would just hide under the dining table or hide under a duvet. Yeah. Um, or freeze, which can be things like going to sleep, um, shutting down and just not interacting at all. Um, and actually that can be a good sign for us anyway that he's getting to what close to having a meltdown um, because he will not be able to interact and he will be completely in his own world and that's a sign that the demands have already been quite intense on him so far and we need to we need to back off and, and yeah. tread carefully so we've talked about all this quite heavy <laughs> subject matter but it's important to remember as well that there is a massive positive side to all this absolutely so PDA children and and adults can use their their skills and their abilities that the PDA gives them to be incredibly skilled and focused on something that they love so Max knows things about Egypt that I don't know at 35 <laughs> and if that was if he found out something that interesting throughout the rest of his life i can see by the time he would be 18 he would be an expert on egypt or whatever he because it's all he can think about it's incredibly useful as a way of teaching because that's what they want to learn about like a sponge i think overall as well we are better parents he's made us better parents he's made us think outside the box <laughs> um a lot of the time the minute he was born um you know we had to start thinking okay he needs something else he doesn't need this or that he needs he needs something important like this you know so um many hours i have spent um looking on google to try and find the solution to several problems so yeah and pretty much every step along the parenting journey there's been an alternative way of doing something that tends to be you have found <laughs> um, and then we've implemented and the, the difference has been amazing and once you see that difference and know that it's because of something you've done as a parent you start to think maybe oh maybe I do know what I'm doing maybe I can do this which 
for a lot of the time you can feel like you're completely out of control and, and lost. Another thing um, is that he has an amazing imagination. Um, and memory as well. And memory as well. He could recite books. He could he could recite Shakespeare, in fact. Yeah. Um, when he was three. Yeah. Um, from simply watching a CBBC production of Midsummer Night's Dream, um, and he wouldn't just recite it; he would act it out and do the intonation and body language and movement and all this, all this sort of stuff. So, be, if he can keep that imagination and use it going forward, it's amazing to think what he could achieve. So. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it's been helpful. Um, please like and uh, comment on the video. Any questions you've got, anything you want us to cover in future videos, uh, subscribe to the channel. Uh, we're still fairly new to doing this and hopefully we're gonna, this channel will grow and grow as people find it. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you don't miss any more videos we upload. Thanks so much for watching. Bye. Bye.